I'm trying a little bit of an experiment out with my new camera. I got the idea from a good friend of mine, SailorFan098. We both collect dolls, so I thought it might be nice if I did a series on some of the action figures and dolls that I collect. Most of my things are comic book and manga related, and for the first video, I want to show off a pair of twins that I have. Ami and Amy. Both are Sailor Mercury. Now, the one on the left is Ami. Ami Mizuno came out in 1995 in Japan. She was one of the first dolls in the Sailor Moon Super S line. And what's really cool about her is that she's also one of the rarest, and she talks. Another cool feature is that if you have the IRC set of Sailor Moon toys and action figures, which is a very rare set you can find on eBay for like a million dollars of different wands and such, you can have them interact with her. She does have an infrared sensor, though I can't quite locate it on the doll right now, and the advertisement said that she can even interact with the show. Well, I haven't quite gotten that feature to work just yet, but she's still one of the coolest dolls in my collection. Now, on her right is her twin sister. Now, in the U.S., Ami is known as Amy, and this doll also came out around the same time, back in 1995. This doll was also made by Bandai, but she was made from the American branch. Now, Bandai of North America distributed dolls all over America and Canada. This is a Canadian doll, and an interesting feature, because this is one of the first Sailor Mercury dolls, she has a little tiny bit of a glitch to her that collectors used to argue about, but I kind of think is really rad. I have to uh, zoom in so you can see this. Not sure if you can quite see it on the camera or not, but she actually has black and blue hair. Instead of giving her blue hair, they gave her little blue patches which was actually a popular hairstyle when she was made. Now, another interesting feature is that her costume, I'm not sure if you can see this, is actually much lighter. It's almost a dark periwinkle, if you can see that. Most Sailor Mercury dolls have a deep royal blue costume, but this one's fuku is almost periwinkle, so it doesn't match anything. Her boots are the same color as they would be in Japan, dark blue. Her gloves, her fuku, or periwinkle, and the little blue gem is the correct color. Another nice feature that I'm surprised most collectors don't talk about are her eyes. She has just the most beautiful blue eyes. I really love this color. There were two versions of her made, one with a light-up tiara and one without. And this is the one without. And another feature is that her hand is molded so that she can hold a wand. Now, in Japan, all of the Sailor Mercury dolls came with the Mercury Transformational Pen, which I might show in a later video. But this one came with the Crescent Moon Wand. All Sailor Moon dolls, until Irwin took over in mid-2000, came with Crescent Moon Wands. And it wasn't until 2000 that Irwin started releasing the dolls with their corrected wands. Ami also came with her own wand, which I'll show in another video. A feature about Ami is that her costume is more based on the Sera Miu plays. So here you have a lot of gold. This is a nice, cool feature. It sort of mimics what happens when she transforms. And you see this particularly in the Japanese dolls. You don't see this too often in the American dolls until about 97. Another th interesting feature about Ami is that her collar is actually plastic. Most collars are little tiny ribbons perma-glued to the doll, but her collar is plastic, and it can detach, which I find a, an interesting little trait. I'm sorry about not holding the camera straight, by the way. This is my first video that I'm doing this. Now, the best feature, of course, and collectors really look after this, her face. Look at that, she just walked right out of the anime. I can't think of a just 
more beautiful face. This is beautiful. And another interesting theory uh, thing, too, is that they gave her gold earrings, whereas usually Ami wears tiny little blue earrings, like you see with Amy over there. Interestingly enough, the first Sailor Moon dolls to cross the U.S. didn't have noses. Isn't that interesting? I'm not quite sure why they went with this design, although if you check her from the profile, she does that little nose-to-mouth thing that most anime characters do, so I suppose that's why they omitted this. Owen would cor correct it later. But I thought this was a nice, cool feature. This is my 2000 Irwin Sailor Mercury doll. And I have to actually pull her into the light now, because she's rather small. She's only six inches. There we go. Now, what you can't quite tell is that the first line of new Irwin dolls after Sailor Moon S got picked up in the United States have this odd little baby face to them. I'm not quite sure why, but it's kind of cute. And also, they have given Ami a huge, huge afro. Now, another thing I forgot to point out is that Irwin was known for doing one other thing. Providing these little tiny stands. Now, the first Bondi Sailor Moon dolls, they didn't have stands at all. And the Japanese dolls actually come with these cute little stands. There we go. That you put together yourself. And they make that little action happen where your knees are pulled in. And these stands are also included with Card Captor Sakura dolls. So I thought that was kind of interesting. All of the Irwin dolls come with their own stands. Ta da! She has a smaller afro than the 6 inch version. Irwin released, released these dolls in three different sizes. And one more time, we have the baby face. And this time we have corrected earrings, whereas the Japanese still give Ami her gold earrings. This one has blue. And we have corrected coloring all over. Somebody actually watched the anime. And curious event here, in one picture from one of the art books, and in some episodes of the anime, Ami does have blue bands. For the remainder of her time in this costume, she has white bands, just like Sailor Moon. Not quite sure why the change, but that's all right. Now, like I said, Irwin released this doll in three different sizes, and I'm actually lucky enough to have size number three. This is an 18-inch Sailor Mercury doll. And this is probably one of my more rare dolls. Now, Irwin released 18-inch Sailor Moon dolls only to specialty shore at stores like comic book shops. This one I found on eToys.com, and... Back then, she was around 20 bucks, which is extremely reasonable. The cheapest one you can find now is $30, if that. Most of these dolls go for about $80 with or without the box. Since, even though I'm 24, I still play with my dolls, I do not have the box anymore. But, that's okay. And again, we have the baby face. Now, there is another version of this doll, one with black pupils, and more makeup, and even more of a baby doll-like face, but good luck finding that one. Cheapest one from the Bandai 18-inch set is about $150, and that is way the hell out of my price range. I'm sorry, even as a doll collector, I just can't justify that, but moving on. Now, this Mercury doll is actually made of a hollow or plastic. So she makes a bit of a sound if you, if you rattle her too much, which the camera doesn't pick up, and that's fine. The other dolls in my collection are all of solid Barbie doll pl plastic, but this one's actually a bit hollow. One really neat fe feature, I love the detail they put in the gloves. Most of my dolls do not have this feature, but here somebody actually read the manga. I am really pleased with that. She has a cute little bow in the back. And, of course, all the Sailor Senshi dolls have Velcro. And this is a really nice one. She does not have all blue hair. These are little tiny blue 
blue patch is sewn in. And I don't think my camera can quite capture it, but most of her hair is dark black. Now, you might be wondering why that is. There was a bit of a rumor around the time that this doll was being made that Disney, the parent company of the defunct Deke, was thinking about doing a live-action Sailor Moon movie. If this had gone into plan, the rumor is that they would have done their own cartoname version of Sailor Moon. No, no, not like Toon Makers, that's something else. And in that version, they would have given Ami black hair, and they also were thinking about retconning Chibulosa, aka Rini, as Serena's sister instead of future daughter. That would have sucked, and I'm kind of glad they never finished that. Anyway, back to Mercury. Now, the smaller dolls have these more manga-like eyes, which, again, the camera can't quite pick up just yet, but it's really nice. It's really, really nice. And her nose is also a bit smaller, or at least the indent where her nose would have been. So her face is a little more pulled together than the 11 and a half inch variety. This is the very first 6-inch Sailor Mercury doll released for the United States market. An interesting thing, all of the 6-inch dolls that came out in 1995 had boots. Now on Mercury and Moon, that's not an issue, but for Ju Jupiter, Mars, and Venus, big error. Which make, makes these dolls rather sought after. This one, I was extremely lucky. I found her on eBay, and I got her on a sale. I bought about six different Sailor Moon dolls, and because they all came from the same seller, I got a really great discount. So this one, with the other dolls combined, $20. If I were to buy this doll again on eBay, I would probably just get the doll, and probably no clothes. Now the next doll is a little bit of a curiosity, because she's not talked about by collectors at all. Don't be shy. You may be thinking, hey, is that the same doll again? No, this one is actually different. This is the second edition Sailor Mercury doll released by Irwin in late 2001. Now you might be asking yourself, what the hell is the difference? Well, let me put her with her sister here. The one on the right came out in 2000 and was for the Sailor Moon S line. The one on the left came out in 2001. This was one of the last dolls Irwin released before, unfortunately, they went belly up, and we lost Sailor Moon in this country. And for some strange reason, her bow is crooked. Now, a lot of the dolls that came out in 2001 have this error. It's only the inner senshi. You don't see this with the outer senshi, which didn't have as many dolls produced. For the most part, they look about the same. They both have chubby little baby faces. But this is a neat little glitch that is how you tell the difference between the two. Now the last doll in the Smith Sailor Mercury line that I have before I turn the camera off is actually an action figure slash keychain. For some reason, my local comic book shops never picked up the whole set outside of Sailor Jupiter. And when the series went to Sailor Moon S, there we go, stop that. Irwin decided to re-release the figures as keychains. They only went as far as Sailor Mercury and Prince Endymion. They never completed the set. The actual set is quite extensive. I've never found the actual two-inch figure of Mercury, but I did get this keychain. And with shipping, that was five dollars. You can see on the back a lot of her old markings, which don't show up on the camera. A lot of the figures were never actually remade. What Bandai did was they imported their overstock of these figures and just sent them ahead to Canada. From Canada they were distributed. They were supposed to have reached Kmart and Walmart out in the United States and for whatever reason we never saw them. So this one's actually quite rare. I had to go through a specialty store that I'm sorry to say is no longer around. Another casualty of the dot-com era but it's quite nice.